What's up everybody, Steven here with Neural DSP, and today I wanna to talk to you about recording and editing guitar DIs. And this is probably the least sexy aspect of audio, but if your recordings aren't clean and if your editing is off, your music will suffer for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and record and edit a couple of tracks for you so you can see what I do, and I'll show you a couple of tricks along the way. Now, I'm not gonna dive in too deep on macros and key commands. I'm really gonna focus more on overarching ideas and techniques. If you really want to get into that, everything's going to be in the user manual of your specific DAW. And I'd really recommend reading through it so you can find those key commands that are going to make your editing that much faster. But of course, if you have questions about what I'm doing, please leave the questions in the comments down below and I will answer them personally. So let's talk about recording guitars. Now I've gotten the question about how I record guitars many times. So there's a couple of things I do, but I usually try to go through section by section to make sure that everything is as clean as possible. And then there's a couple of additional things I might try to make sure that the strings aren't resonating as I'm playing. Whenever I'm trying to record guitars, I try to take out as many sympathetic vibrations as possible. So you can see that I already taped up the strings above the nut because I don't want those vibrating when I'm doing some palm muting heavy parts. And as far as when I'm recording rhythms, I try to mute the strings that are not gonna be played. So for this first riff, it's only being played on the eighth string. So I'm gonna mute all other seven strings. Basically, I just take paper towel or toilet paper and wrap it between the strings that are not being played. So I'll take the paper towels, I'll thread them through the strings. I'll lock them up here at the top, kind of bunch them up towards the nut and make sure that they're not gonna get in the way of my left hand. Let's talk about a couple of things I do before I start recording. I wanna make sure that the buffer size is set low enough that I'm not experiencing latency. Also make sure that your recording track is set to your output. Every plugin that you have in your chain is going to introduce latency. So let's say I have my recording chain set to my mix bus. That's gonna go through all of my mastering chain and it's gonna come out delayed, regardless of how low I set my buffer size. So let's go ahead and record and then comp together our takes. Okay, I feel like I got some pretty usable takes there, so let's go ahead and move on to the next section. So when I'm recording riffs that have no open strings or when I'm recording lead guitar, I'll generally use something like a fret wrap to keep my recording as clean as possible. Now, I don't recommend practicing with these all the time. I merely use them to keep my recordings as clean as possible. So now I got my fret wrap on, so let's go ahead and do a couple of takes of the next section. So now we got several takes for the A and B section, so let's go ahead and edit those together. So when we're talking about editing, we have to talk about the anatomy of your guitar signal. There's gonna be three parts to the signal that you wanna keep track of. There's the pick attack, there's the transient, and there's the body of the note. So you can easily see that I have a tendency to push the beat as I'm recording. So we're gonna probably wanna slide a lot of these back. So there's one thing that we wanna keep in mind as we're editing guitar DIs, is we do not want to delete this pick attack. This pick attack clearly defines to your ear that you're listening to an electric guitar. So getting rid of that will make it sound really funky. All right, so let's go ahead and start comping a take together. I'm gonna try and use these five takes to comp together two separate rhythm tracks, my left and my right. So we're gonna go ahead and listen to this last take and try and see where I messed up. Okay, so this was a little bit sloppy, so let's go ahead and look through my other takes and see if I can find something that's a little bit better. Okay, so basically these two are garbage, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete those anyway so I can make sure to keep my, my tracks clean. So I liked this one, so let's go ahead and move this up and then continue. Now, I was kind of sloppy with my muting on these ones, so I ended up actually hitting a couple of the harmonics on the eighth string, so you can hear that, that note popping out. So let's go ahead and listen through and see if I can find a better take. All 
Definitely not this one. That was also sloppy, so let's go ahead and take a listen. I like that. That's very machine gunny. Let's just go ahead and pop this up. Move on to the next. So again, I'm hitting some harmonics on that eighth string on this particular take. So let's go ahead and move this one up. And then listen to the whole thing real quick. So there's a disparity between this take and, no, and this one here. So let's go ahead and move this up and see if I can't match these two tones real quick. Okay, that doesn't sound so bad. I'll have to clean up a couple of these tails, but uh, we'll get to that in a minute. So let's go ahead and just make sure that this comp is clean and then we'll move on to making a second one. Cool, so let's go ahead, take this, move that to my left. Let's go ahead and make my right guitar. Okay, I like all of that. Let's go ahead and move that up. And which of these sounded good? Okay, so that's pretty close. So let's go ahead and move this up. And then we'll listen to the rest of this and see if it sounds solid. Nope, there was a note in there I didn't like. Okay, so I liked everything from here. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this up. But I liked this section here, so I'm gonna move this up. I like that a lot, so let's move that up. And then finally, the last few notes. Okay, so that sounded pretty good. So now I have my right guitar. And then I have additional notes just in case I need to mess I need to mess around with that further. So let's go ahead and I've comped these together haphazardly as it is. Let's go ahead and listen to these in comparison to the rest of the mix. Okay, so those comps are sounding pretty good, so let's go ahead and move on to the second section and comp together the next takes. Okay, so I missed a note right off the bat, so let's go ahead and listen to the other takes real quick. Whoop. Let's get rid of that thing. Okay, so those both sounded okay.
Okay, so I just ended up deleting the notes that I didn't like as we moved along. So now I know where my mistakes are and that where I need to edit them. Okay, so let's see if I can get away with just moving this individual note up. So let's move this one up and go ahead and listen. And then listen to these ones. All right, so that sounds pretty good. Okay, so that wasn't so bad. So let's go ahead and listen to the comp one more time and just make sure that all the notes are correct. Cool, that sounds pretty good to me. Now I will be doing the editing after I finish comping these together. So let's go ahead and drag this down and then we'll make our second comp. Now there's nothing wrong with grabbing a section from later in the riff and then moving that over to the previous spots. So let's go ahead and take this. And then we could just copy this over, paste it, and then we're good to go. Now we got... And we can just drag this one over. That sounds pretty good, so let's keep moving. So we'll go ahead and copy this, paste it. So that note was a little weak, so let's go ahead and listen to this one. That sounds good to me. So let's go ahead and uh, see. Uh, uh, and that, and that. All right, so that note was also a little weak, so let's go ahead and take that out and then find a better one. So 
So is this, let's go ahead and copy this and then paste it there. Excellent, so now I have my second take. Copy it, paste, drag it down. All right, so now I'm good with my rhythm guitars. So now that we have our comp takes, let's go ahead and start editing them to the grid. Now this is a point of contention because a lot of people think that quantizing or editing to the grid is going to take the life out of your songs. And I would agree to a certain point if you quantize every single note and take some of that human imperfection out of it, you are gonna make it sound a little bit too robotic. But at the same time, if you leave it too loose, it's gonna sound sloppy and it's not gonna sound as good. So a lot of it is using your ear to try and figure out where that balance lies. So I'm gonna start by editing all the transients to the grid and see how that sounds. Now, when it comes to the silences in between the spaces, you could use the input gate. However, when I'm editing these and I really wanna make sure that they are tight, I usually manually go in and edit out the spaces and just delete it. That way I can control the envelope of the audio as it's going out. So there is a limit to how much you can move notes around and cut them up and then sound natural. So this particular instance right here is this note is very, very early. So when I cut this, move it back, crossfade it, and then move it so that way that pick attack doesn't happen twice, you get this particular sound. And you can kind of try and see if you can fix that by moving the crossfade around, but usually it doesn't work. That sort of strange resonance is because you have a note that starts off sharp and then falls into itself, and then you have it go back up for this next section. So you have this progression of a note starting off sharp, settling into the note, and then this portion right here is about where this next section starts. So instead of something that sounds like this, you have something that sounds like this. Ah, it just sounds funky. So there are a couple of ways that you can get around this. Now, most DAWs will allow you to expand or compress clips based on time. So you can use this TCE setting, which is time and compression expansion. So you can actually stretch this to meet the next clip but sometimes it makes it sound a little too wonky if you're using too much expansion. Ugh. So that sounds really bad. So then another way that you can use this is doing what's called polyphonic elastic audio, which allows you to warp the clip a little bit further and still sound a little bit more natural. So let's go ahead and take a listen to this. That sounded pretty good. And basically this is Pro Tools algorithm to stretch a note without losing its clarity. And the reason why I'm dropping an anchor here is because I don't want any of this stretching at the pick attack or at the transient because that's the meat of the note. And one thing that you wanna do once you're finished with your polyphonic moves, we want to click none and commit. Otherwise, when you bounce it down, the changes won't be committed and you'll be left with really weird takes. All right, so let's keep going. Okay, so let's go ahead and listen to what I did and see if it makes sense. Cool, that sounds pretty good. So basically the same principles apply to the next section. So I'm just gonna go ahead and very quickly edit through and we'll catch up after I'm done. 
Now the cool thing about this section is it can be a little bit more loose. It can add to the weight of the emotion of the section by not being 100% locked to the grid. Cool, so that's sounding pretty good. So as you can tell, I edited the crap out of these guitars. And it's not because any of these particular takes were sloppy, it's because I want to ensure that the recordings that I make are as good a quality as I can possibly make them. And a lot of that is just editing everything to the grid and making sure that it's in line with the drums and the bass. Especially when your bass and your drums are MIDI and they are snapped to the grid as is, I want to make sure that my guitar playing is as close to those as I can get them. So let's go ahead and recap the things that I do to ensure that I have good recorded guitars. When I'm recording, I always want to use a fret wrap or tissue paper or something that's going to mute the strings that are not being used at the moment. So that way I don't get any sort of sympathetic frequencies or vibrations from the other strings. So once that's figured out, I can go to my setup and playback engine and set my buffer size to as small as possible so I don't deal with as much latency. Then I set my recording track to the output so that way I don't have to deal with any latency of my signal going through my mastering chain. After that, I go ahead and comp together my two takes from all of my previous takes. Then I go through and line up my transients to the grid while making sure to preserve the pick attack at the beginning of the strike. And then if I have a note that's not long enough to reach the next clip, I'll use either time compression expansion or elastic audio to expand the note so that way it can take up the duration that I need it to. And don't forget to disengage the elastic audio so that way it commits the edits that you made. After that, I'll use crossfades to ensure that my clips don't pop as it's being played. And then I'll strip silence all the parts that I'm not playing so that way I don't have any noise in between my notes. Now there are a lot of different ways that you can edit your guitar DI, some of them a little bit more automated than others. This is what I found to be most useful for my workflow. But experiment on your own and try out a lot of different things. You might be surprised with what you can come up with. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and hit that bell icon for notifications on when we upload our videos, and comment down below. Let me know if you like this content and if you want to see more like it. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.